All righty. Well, uh, this is hit episode one, take one. <laughs> well, good afternoon. Good afternoon, and welcome to all of you, the faithful of the Diocese of Orlando. My name is Father Martin. I am the parochial administrator at St. Paul Catholic Community in Leesburg, and I'm joining Bishop Noonan today as we want to share with you just a few things to uh, remind you that we're here for you and want to stay connected with our faithful. Bishop, how are you? I am fine today on this Palm Sunday. On this Palm Sunday. Sunday. But it is different than any other Palm Sunday I've ever had. I, you know? I don't think anyone in uh, living memory could actually remember uh, a holy week such as this. Um, it's, it's definitely very surreal. Um, and I said this to my people over the weeks. Um, this is a very weird time to be a priest uh, because a priest without his people is very challenging. What do you think about a bishop without I mean, his flock? Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, isn't that sad? I miss, I miss the people, but I also miss all the priests. <laughs> because we, true we, because we we would have gotten together very soon for the chrism mass correct yes oh yeah Be and unfortunately yes. because of uh, hurricane dorian back in september we had to cancel our priest convocation so it's been a while since we gathered together as one's presbyterate so yeah it's 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 different and we, and we missed our penitential you know where we're going to have our, our gathering for for, for Lent, you know, our, our one day gathering at San Pedro, we missed out on that as well. That so is true. That is true. So we have missed a lot of things of getting together. So it's kind of like I'm really at a loss because I haven't seen my priest in, in probably almost a year now. Wow. So maybe through its uh, outlet, through Zoom conference, uh, we're going to try to connect to different priests when we get a chance. Uh, but that being said, how are you surviving your social distancing? My social distancing is probably I've had no confirmation for the last month, which is really another time of uh, kind of adjusting. Um, not as many meetings, but a lot of uh, teleconferencing. You know, um, we have meetings I probably with the, all the bishops of Florida once a week, telephone conferences. And then there's a lot of meetings that I have in the chancery office. So not all, none of them are video, but most of them are phone conferences every day. So we've been meeting a lot because a lot of things are coming up in these next few weeks, especially with the parishes, because since there is um, no churches open, we are having to face some real difficult financial issues with our, our different parishes and with staff. So that's a, a big concern to, to me and to all the pastors and to the Chancery Office itself. Right, and and to be that support for the parishes in this moment is, is is not an easy task. And as the uh, uh, the leader of the whole diocese, you do have to make a lot of difficult decisions, and and probably not everyone's going to be happy about it. But that well, said, it comes with your job, right? <laughs> yeah. And one of the sad parts is, you know, the people that go to church every day are the people you feel sorry for. Those are the elderly people, usually the retired people who love to go and. That's their whole day is to go to church every morning. Those people feel lost and they feel forsaken. But I think, you know, it's, it's sad, but it's very important, their protection and that we have to safeguard them. You know, it's not just me, it's the whole world we have to look after at this stage. You know, we see how, how, how tragic it has been in Europe and Italy and, and oops, see what happens. No worry, no worry. So Bishop and I are trying to uh, attempt to be diffi uh, technical uh, savvy, but we we'll both fail pretty miserably at it. <laughs> well, now it's okay. Now it, my, my, we're back on video. But I feel sorry for the elderly people who are the mass scores every day. They're the ones that feel, I feel sorry for more than anything else. But I guess it's also a reminder to them, you know, they have been probably blessed for all their lives of having been able to go to mass. Some people can't go to Mass every day. Some people who are sick can't go to Mass every day. But some people in some parts of the world can't go to Mass every day. There was periods of time where the church was being suppressed or the church was being persecuted. And the people, Mass was not available to them. 
So it's an important time too for us to reflect on the gift of our, our, our priests and the gifts of our parishes. That, you know, it, it, it's a luxury probably for us here in the United States to have that luxury of having parishes and having them so convenient to us to be able to go to Mass every day. Oh, I totally agree. I totally agree. I said this to, to my folks as well, is that sometimes I think we, because it's so readily accessible, we've taken the Holy Mass, we've taken the sacraments for granted, and, and we feel entitled. Okay, this is it. This is it. You know, this is only a short drive away. Uh, but hopefully, you know, by going through this period of isolation where we feel so separated, that we we would take the Lord for we would appreciate the gifts that we we have a lot more, but on that same note, uh, for those folks who are not able to go to mass, who feel so stuck and isolated, is there anything as your shep as their shepherd uh, that you would like to say to them? Well, I think you know Pope Benedict, our Cardinal Ratzinger, when he was cardinal, he wrote a beautiful piece about spiritual communion. And he talked about the periods of time in the church history. And I know from my in fact, in being Irish, that, you know, for 300 years, people couldn't go to church in Ireland. And yet the church survived. And it survived not because of the people not being able to go to church, but because they prayed. People learned to, to pray together. You know, the rosary became a very important gift. Private prayers became a very important gift. So very rarely did, were people able to go to church. But when, they, when the church did come back, then the church was very strong because people had faith enough. So I mm -hmm. think it's always important for us to kind of be able to help them with that. The same thing with confession. You know, I think we have, there's a, there's a great history in the church and the wisdom of the church of helping people to realize there are times when we can't go to confession. But the church and, and the grace of God provides that at least we make the intention, make a good act of contrition and, you know, to say our prayers and say that the first opportunity I get, I will go back to confession. So the church provides, our, or the grace of God provides for moments like this and not to be worried. That's the main concern. Hopefully people find God's peace, not being trapped that they can't receive the Eucharist or they can't go to confession. But the Lord provides for those moments too. That's true. And, and, even though we're not physically able to be there together. But personally, I feel like I have been so connected with my people because I pray for them a lot more. Uh, I try to make calls to, uh, to check up on them and I write to them as well. So, you know, there's different means that, that people can, can remain connected even though they're not able to physically be at church because the church is not just the building, the church is the people of God. And so right. in a different way, uh, God is asking us to go through, I think, this period of the desert where just like the Israelites, you know, we were so deprived from the regular comforts. Uh, but in those times, the purification takes place in the heart. And so um, we hope that everyone who's watching this know that the bishop and your priest were thinking about you and were praying for you a lot. And so before I end this little segment, Bishop, would you please give uh, us uh, your blessing? Yes, and let me just one uh, little thought that came to my mind. One of the issues that I try to do every day is I, I've started off calling our retired priests, especially those who are living alone, and asking them how they're doing. And, you know, it's beautiful in a sense because they're saying Mass. They've been saying Mass on their own for quite some time. But right. the fact that they are praying for the people is a beautiful gift to talk and hear them talk about that they're every day thinking about the people of God, that they have learned to accept this, that they have not, they haven't had the people with them because they've had to say mass on their own. Some of them are quite elderly. Some of them I feel very sorry for, you know, there's many, um, many Fernandez who is in Spain mm -hmm. and he, you know, has, he texts me, he, he texts me probably once a week and we talk to one another, but very sad for him because he can't say mass but he is in a home with other priests, but he is very nervous because, you know, Spain is so dangerous right now. So right, I, the I just, medical I system there's not very well, yeah. yeah. So to, I ask the people in one sense to pray for our retired priests, those who are, are you know, some of them are, are quite elderly and on their own, pray for them. And as I, has, I have also asked them to pray for the people of God. So I think at this time, I would like the people to know that they're in my prayers and all our priest prayers, that 
we really truly want God to be with all of us to help us during this time and not to be afraid. You know, Jesus over and over again said, be not afraid. That's the real message of, of, of this week. You know, Jesus to Mary Magdalene, Jesus to the disciples was constantly, don't be afraid. So let the Lord be our guide during this week and may it be a holy week for all of us in a simple way that we can gather, watch mass on television or watch the different ceremonies from Rome or whatever, but make it a time to be with the Lord and let the Lord be our guide so we will not be afraid. Indeed. Thank you, Bishop. So would you please give us your blessing? The Lord be with you. And, and may the blessing spirit. of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. And everyone, please stay well, stay positive, and stay spiritually connected. God bless you and keep you.